Hello everybody, good morning, happy hump day. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic power recapper and host of Bachelor Nation News. It's the final day of my wedding vacation, which is why I'm wearing this amazing shirt with my now wife plastered all over it, given to me by one Dr. Um, Victoria Bossy. So thank you so much for this amazing shirt here. And we've got a story that's very interesting. We have Rachel Kirkconnell on a podcast with Bree Springs, and she talks about how she actually was dumped before the after the final rose. She talks about Chris Harrison. She talks about how the show um, didn't want her to win, how people um, kind of um, dismissed them. We're going to get into this. It's very fascinating. I'll play a few clips, and then if you stick around for the end, I'll share with you several of these wedding photos that nobody has seen yet. So stick around for the end and you'll get these wedding photos from this past weekend. All right, let's get into it. Here's the first clip. The audio is not great. The focus is okay. The um, cameras were not really, you know, you can see like the cameras are focused on the picture frames. Uh, we'll, we'll get into all of it. Bree, Bree's microphone is not even facing her direction, so the audio is not perfect. But hey, that's okay. It's all about the drama. We can handle a little reverb. You know how like Susie was like literally going down. Did you watch Clayton season? And she's like no, going down I the didn't. staircase, and she's like, if he slept with other girls, like I'm going home. Like she was going crazy. Like she's going mm. sort of crazy, or so like the show showed. Yeah. Um, like that was me. Like they, I think they purposely held me last to like make me go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and they did a great job. I went crazy. Yeah. I was like so not okay. Running on three hours of sleep you know, locked away in a room, yeah. like just like all you're left with no one, but yourself and your thoughts. And I have this really bad habit of always thinking the worst. Yeah. So like, I'm thinking like, well, his mind's changed. Like I'm probably going to show up to this date or not even change, but just like decided. Psychological warfare, folks, three hours sleep, locked in a room, knowing a guy's dating other women. So of course, uh, Rachel Kirkconnell here is talking to Bree Springs, one of the finalists, and the other finalist was Matt James. So uh, the fact that Rachel Kirkconnell is doing what I think is her first podcast and also talking to a friend means I think we're going to get extra information. They're comfortable. Let's listen. We have to figure out how the way the show is going to end. And yeah. we will do everything in our power to make sure he does not end up with Rachel. And that's what I kept telling why, myself. Why? 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 Well, if I'm speaking personally for myself, I felt like Please. having, we know that he was marketed as the first black bachelor, whether he was consenting to that or not, which I think was a really big step. But if as a producer, you still do have to take like inventory of the cultural environment and your awareness and surroundings of what's happening culturally. And in my, in my mind, I kept telling myself, there's no way they couldn't, there's no way they would not let him end up with someone who wasn't black. Wow. because of the show and if you and think about true. it it's your show it's your job true. it is literally She's your right. job to tell a cohesive story from start to finish and yes there are obstacles and yes there are challenges and heartbreaks and but at the end of, at the end of the day love prevails all and mm -hmm. i was so strongly convinced that they were going to make this the one where black love prevailed wow. they I'd... wanted that it was so important for them to portray that with yeah. everything that was going on in the world I mean obviously it's been going on now for forever but like it was at a it was at a peak you know yeah and now of course Matt James was uh, catapulted to the lead uh, not even doing Claire Crowley season he was one of the first uh, bachelors to jump th right through the system after George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement took its full steam uh, during the height of the pandemic and I thought the same thing and and like talking to Matt about it afterwards. Yeah. You were spot on. Yeah. They did want that. Yeah. And not only did I feel that too, and so I was just waiting, like I was just waiting for it, but now talking with Matt about it, like they they did do like They'd go to probably miles. everything they could to like to get us to not be together because Very fascinating. They did everything they could to get us to not be together. And I don't, I mean, look, that's, that's their opinion. They're allowed to have it. They were there. We weren't, um, but very fascinating stuff here. And so you're spot on with that, but yeah, it's just, it's just crazy how well, they make, they try to make it work like I'll that. Also they, say, this is what I was trying to say at the finale when we were mm, wrapping filming up, 
you guys. <laughs> it's hilarious. We, they couldn't have been more disappointed. Like, he handed me that final rose, and as we're, like, doing our final interview, they're literally, like, breaking apart the, the set around <laughs> us. Like, not one single so person, like, came. Yeah, not one single person, like, came and was, like, congrats or just like you know like i'm happy for you guys no so what's so funny about that is you you start to realize it is a tv show they're done they maybe they were working overtime and they were going home for the day it is a tv show at the end of the day as they like to say all right a couple really good clips here about how rachel and michelle's conversation never aired why matt james uh was so angry or not angry but why he was so not willing to participate in after the final rose, and then also what they said about Chris Harrison. This was never aired, um, but Michelle and I talked to AFR, mm -hmm. and she kind of even, like, we touched on that. She was like... What's AFR, sorry? So AFR is... Um, after, the is final rose. after the after final After the rose. final rose. Oh. Yes. Um, so it's the after show, and it's actually filmed in, like, real time pretty much. Usually it's live, but because of COVID and whatnot, it wasn't live for us. Thank God, because Matt, no joke, took like 10 minutes to answer each question. Like, we wouldn't have gotten anything done because it would have just been the commercial. It would have been like this <laughs> for 10 minutes. Wait, he was like, just right. sitting, being yes. silent? Yes. Yeah. And like, I don't know, probably just because. By the way, this is fascinating to hear. The fact that they didn't, rec they, they were taped it live, live to tape. They, did, they didn't air it live. So he's taking 10 minutes to answer every question. And as we saw, at that point, he felt like he was a pawn. He felt like they used him to tell a story. They wrecked their personal life and their connection, and he felt completely used. And he didn't want to be a part of it, but contractually, he had to. Because he was trying to figure out the perfect things to say because he was under so much pressure. Yeah. So it was so hard for him. Like, I'll never forget that because I felt so bad. And that's half the reason, like, if you watch it back, I'm, like, <laughs> trying to come from him and be like, Matt, just say something. And then he's, like, pulling away because he's like, you can't touch me right I now. I specifically you. remember this, yes. <laughs> and Did everyone's, like, everyone's like, oh, my gosh, he's disgusted with her. Yeah, of course that wasn't, like, the case. Like, not that, but you know what's funny is everyone thinks, like, we were faking that, too. Crazy. Yeah, that was not fake. People were like, they faked breaking up. Like, no. All right, here, you're hearing it first. Like, right here. Working he dumped me. Okay, everyone. Like, so that you was were real. part of the 97%. I was. Wow. So really, it's 100%. Really, it was 100%. It was 100%. He, no dumped, he one broke up with all 100%. With he did. He actually did. He actually did. Yeah. Actually, wow. we have to think about the, the girls that sent themselves. We were, we were talking and she was basically just saying like... So here's Rachel's conversation with Michelle that they did not air on the After the Final Rose. Talking about the audience itself and she was like, how crazy is it that everything that happened this season with you and with the host and everything... The host being Chris Harrison and Rachel being the antebellum style photos that came out, Chris Harrison defending her, Chris Harrison getting replaced by Emmanuel Acho and eventually fired. One, like you still have all of these followers you still have all of these supporters mm. you still have people defending you and here we are and you know everyone else in the top five yeah. was interracial or mixed Bi yeah yeah biracial and um and you know like no one was and i can't i don't even like talking about it but she was basically saying like we're not even like at the level you are and why do you think that is mm -hmm. she was basically saying like it's it's the audience like it's not just you but this entire audience of the show right is some type of way yeah so it sounds like they're talking about the instagram following and the the influencer following that they got from the show how come rachel developed a much bigger audience than the other contestants in the finale while the when the other contestants were not white to where like not only are they following you and defending you and supporting you but they don't even have the decency to like support yeah. us yeah you know yeah and i will even so i agree with you on that it was it's also so true that's the franchise and if you look at and if you look at um all right we had a big cut there she said that's the franchise and then they cut and i think that's telling that is the franchise that's the franchise and that's a portion of society that was going to support rachel because she was white and not others and then that's not everybody but that's a portion and that shows up statistically by the followers the white contestants get a bigger following after the show. You can follow those stats. I even felt bad with Michelle's season because 
obviously the seasons have been going like this every time they're aired. Mm -hmm. So yes, Katie's um, like viewer wise did better. But even if you look at follower wise, mm -hmm. like Gabby and Rachel are doing very well. Yeah. And I think I really well, do think- Well, actually, Gabby just hit a million Instagram followers, but Rachel's not even at 600,000. That just goes to show you that like, like that audience, like why, why are they choosing to follow Gabby? And, and to be fair, Michelle Young does not run a good social media. She doesn't do much social media. So there is interaction that happens. It, it's not in a vacuum, just people follow and don't follow. You do have to harness it. But, um, but Gabby runs a good social media and she has a million. But don't get me wrong, of course, there's other factors at play. Rachel over right. at Michelle or anyone else, any other woman of color that was on the season previously, especially a lead, though, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's just, it's really crazy when yeah. you look at it. So. All right, so that's the first part of this conversation they're going to have a lot more to talk about i have to parse through it we have a lot to get through there so that's where i'm going to leave that conversation but she said some fascinating things about the show and she did it in a very nice and kind of sort of um, um smart way where she didn't bash the franchise she just said this is what it is and that is what it is and people can make their um sort of um i don't know um, opinions based based off that all right i'll share with you guys just a couple of these photos I am going to be doing like a watch party on Patreon where we share like the high res images and all the different ones. Here's just like five or so. So we've got a couple from the wedding. Uh, your boy uh, giving, giving the old uh, runway smooch happening right here. Tasha's smiling over there. My wife smiling in the background as she prepares for our final day. Oh, the waltz. Of course, of course, you will be getting all this footage. Not a member of the audience. Even baby Charlie is checking out the waltz. My left arm could have been higher up. Maybe my elbow had fallen down in the frame. But you can see here we had one of those um, uh, LLED dance floors, which was very nice. Um, this was a photo booth that we had. You kind of, It's like in a little old van. So we did a photo booth. Uh, the boys sent me through the moon there. Nice little um, lift off, some dancing. And um, happily ever after. Have mercy, folks. Have mercy. And then a beautiful wedding cake that was designed specifically to match our decor. So that's what I got for you. I'll have a ton more coming your way. Once I get home and can kind of get some time to uh, get this all together, Wednesday I'll have a couple videos up. And then Thursday and Friday we're just going to finish the week off unpacking. I'm flying back tonight. And I, I so appreciate all the love you guys have sent us. Um, on all the different social medias. So thank you guys so much. It's, it's literally just overwhelming. And Tasha and I are finally starting to like look at the Instagram videos and DMs and everything. So thank you again for making this week so special. Uh, leave a comment below. Hit the like button if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.